Welcome back to King Arthur and the Round Table. We're now on chapter 20, the departure of Sir Lancelot. And if you remember from the previous chapter, we learned about the Civil War. And this Civil War pretty much came between um, Sir Lancelot and the King. And really, it was not necessarily the King as it was the Orkney clan, right? And Sir Gawain, his hatred towards Sir Lancelot, his jealousy. That the Orkney clan was so powerful that they even had convinced the king to fight against Sir Lancelot. And so Sir Lancelot and his family, the civil war happened between them. And in the end, many people died. And finally, they came to like a treaty of sorts, right? That the queen, because she had been taken... Right, the queen could be returned to the king in exchange for Sir Lancelot being banished. So Sir Lancelot, because of Sir Gawain and his hatred, was banished. He had devoted his entire life for fighting for Britain and for his queen and the love of, of King Arthur, his, his very good friend and Queen Guinevere. In the end, as he's aging, he is now banished and sent away. And that is what we're about to read about is his departure. Departure means to leave, the leaving of Sir Lancelot. Okay. Sir Lancelot called all his kin and friends, so all his family and friends, together in the Hall of Joyous Guard, his castle. He renamed the castle Dolorous Guard and told them he was exiled and was going back to his lands in France. What would they do? Well, they all decided to go with him. For they all knew that in Britain there would be no peace, but always quarrels and war now that the fellowship of the round table was broken. He offered each of them lands, for he was lord of great provinces in western and southern France. So they took ship at Cardiff and sailed to Benwick, which now is called Bayonne. There Sir Lancelot gave every man the lands he had promised. Then he set out through all his territories to see their preparations for war. He knew that Sir Gawain would come, and he meant to be ready for him. Sure enough, in a few months, Sir Gawain and King Arthur sailed from Cardiff with an army. Sir Mordred was left as governor of the kingdom and protector of the queen. In a few weeks, the British force was ravaging Sir Lancelot's lands. In Benwick, Sir Lancelot held a council of war. Sir Bors urged open combat. Sir Lionel urged waiting until the enemy had run out of food and then to attack them. They all insisted that there was to be no more sparing of the king and showing courtesy, as Sir Lancelot had done in Britain. Here they were on their own ground. King Arthur had invaded them, and they wanted to be free to treat him as an enemy. The result of the council was that an offer of peace was sent by the hand of a damsel and a dwarf to the king's camp. But when she had delivered her message, the king gave Sir Gawain permission to answer her, and the peace offer was rejected. The next morning, Benwick was besieged. For six months, the siege went on. Every day, Sir Gawain rode in front of the main gates and took on a knight in single combat, and he always won. There were skirmishes and jousts, but no serious fighting, and the months dragged on. Then Sir Lancelot agreed to joust with Sir Gawain, who had, de who had defeated and wounded so many of his knights. They met at last, and the battle was long and hard. For three hours they fought, but in the end Sir Lancelot laid Sir Gawain helpless on the ground. He drew back and left him. Sir Gawain ground his teeth and shouted to him to finish him off, swearing that as soon as he was healed, he would seek him out again. Sir Lancelot answered that he would be ready for him, but that he would not kill a helpless man. Because remember, he still fights by the code of chivalry. Sir Gawain is not. Sir Gawain carried to his tent, was carried to his tent and lay there for three weeks while his wound healed. When he was well, he came out and challenged Sir Lancelot again. They fought again, and the result was the same. As Gawain lay on the field, frantic with defeat and helplessness, he still brandished his sword and tried to stab Sir Lancelot, shouting defiance at him. Sir Lancelot turned away, saying, Whenever you can stand on your feet, I will fight you. 
but I will not strike a wounded man who cannot stand. He went back inside the city gates. In his madness, Sir Gawain refused to listen to any sense or persuasions from the king or his own friends. He did not care if the entire army perished of cold and hunger, so long as his thirst for revenge was satisfied. So he's being very selfish. His only plan was to wait until his wound was healed and then to fight Sir Lancelot again. But meanwhile, news came from Britain to King Arthur that brought the entire camp to its senses. Mordred had announced to the people of Britain that he had received news that the king and Sir Lancelot were dead, and he therefore declared himself king. Sir Mordred declared himself king and had been crowned and was about to force the queen to marry him. She had shut herself up in the Tower of London, and Mordred, Mordred had surrounded it. So remember that the Tower of London is the ancient ancient fortress of London begun by the Romans. Gawain and his grievances were forgotten. The siege was over. The king ordered his army to pack and make all speed for Britain. That's a short chapter. Okay, the last battle and the death of Arthur is the next chapter. We will finish both the last two chapters tomorrow. All right, have a wonderful day.